folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the Farm Vlog today. Today, we're going to be making apple cider. We're going to make apple cider, apple juice, and apple cider vinegar over the next few months here. We've got two bins of what they call number two apples, meaning apples with slight blemishes, stuff that just wasn't pretty enough to make it to the store and sell. And we went to an orchard, we picked those up, and today we're going to make cider. So sitting beside me right here is a press, and this press is a fruit press for pressing grapes or apples or peaches or whatever you want to press in there. I don't think you could press bananas in there, but you could press pretty much whatever fruit you want to press. Right here we have a apple grinder and it's a specific tool where you just basically drop your apples in, you turn this big wheel over here on the side and it grinds up the apples. So we'll chip up the apples, we'll put them in this bag right here and this is a bag specifically designed for this press and we'll press out the apple juice into containers. We'll put them into big carboys, which are big glass containers, and we'll let them ferment. Now the ones that we let ferment will turn into alcohol. So that will be apple wine or apple cider, hard cider, but it's not going to be very sweet. We're not going to use any ingredients other than what nature has provided for us and apples. So we're going to grind up these apples today. Come along on the farm vlog. We're all going to learn a little something together. We're going to have some fun making all natural apple cider, apple cider vinegar, and apple juice. Cool. <laughs> Guys, I'm going overboard a bit. This is about eh, 1,500 to 2,000 pounds of apples. <laughs> what am I gonna do? So all these apples that you see in the boxes right here are number one apples, and the ones we're getting are number twos, meaning they have little blemishes and stuff like that, which is fine for cider or vinegar or whatever it is we're gonna use it for. So before we get to grinding our apples, we're gonna take our bag here and we're gonna stretch it out just over top of the press and we're gonna grind our apples. They'll come out of this and this is the first time I've used this piece of equipment so you're gonna get to see it in action. You can get this on Amazon and you can get this on Amazon. There'll be links to all these goodies right down in the video description below. What we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and start turning, start chewing up apples and put them in the press. We'll talk to you about the science of all this and basically all the procedure as we go. So here are the two bins of apples, guys. We have <laughs> 2,000 pounds of apples. We're gonna make a ton of cider here and whatever we don't use, we'll either compost or we'll set out for the deer to eat and we'll give some to our goats and some to our chickens too. Be pretty fun. So over here we have my father. I guess that's Papa Stony Ridge and he's helping out. We're using this apple grinder for the very first time and it looks like we need a more substantial table. So down in here, there aren't any blades. It's just basically metal tabs that stick up and they just masticate or chew up all the apples and then they just fall in here. It's working pretty good. We're gonna get sticky, I know that. Let's just rake some out here. We're letting mother nature's natural yeast kind of make this ferment. So we're not adding any yeast. We're not adding any additives. This is all just pure washed apples for straight from the orchard. So I'm going to load these up and when he gets tired, I'm going to start cranking on them. It's working out pretty good. This machine isn't the most expensive machine out there, but chewing up the apples pretty good, don't you think? Yes, I do. Well, you might be wondering whether you need to cut out the rotten spots. You really don't need to cut out the rotten spots or the stems or the seeds. You don't have to core them or cut them up or anything. All that stuff will be held in the bag down here and it will be filtered out twice before it goes into the carboys, into the big glass jars, which will stay in the house at about 60 to 70 degrees. Try to explain to you what this feels like. It's as if when your power steering goes bad in your car, that's how it steers. So basically it turns like, uh, 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 uh. like if your power steering pump went bad in your car, if you're running low on power steering. And then we bought this extra bin to go on the top of it. I think it's really handy, but the apples will tend to bind up in there. So you kind of got to stir, but you don't want to stick your hand down in there because it might suck it in. like this kind of stuff, put me a comment down there. Put me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more fun stuff like this. And you can follow this whole process. This will probably take 
somewhere in the neighborhood of three weeks to ferment into uh, cider and then probably somewhere in the neighborhood of two years to make good apple cider vinegar so gonna be really good what we'll do here we're full now pretty much and I'll show you get you a little close-up we'll take this bag close it off twist it off and then rotate the press up and press the juice out it's already got juice running out looks yummy so we're gonna pull up the sleeve here and this is basically I guess it's similar to a military uh, style laundry bag pretty much so we'll get this thing up pull it up kind of press our apples a little bit kind of fold it over just like so and that way it holds in and what this thing does is basically hold back seeds and pulp and all kinds of stuff we got juice rolling out the bottom already it's awesome we'll tilt this guy up all the way there we go <laughs> learning as we go here too i've never used this machine now my dad's here he's helping me and this is how i kind of got the bug for this so his basement is full of awesome little science projects making wine and making vinegar and stuff like that so i kind of got the bug from watching my dad we'll slide this guy back and then we'll crank down our handle you can see it start to crank down here what you'll do is you'll press it down for a little bit then you'll wait it'll kind of give a little bit then you'll squeeze in press it down a little more do a little something else come back just keep doing that and you'll continue to get more and more cider we'll show you this cider running out of here it's pretty cool this is a food grade bucket a tiny food grade bucket right here and you see that juice just flowing out of there we'll go from the food grade bucket and i've got a milk jug we'll slide up under there to catch the rest of it and we'll put this in the five gallon food grade bucket you just kind of crank down put some hard pressure on there what you don't want to do is crank so hard that you start seeing these wooden slats bowing that's that's what you want to avoid but you can just keep on cranking a little bit of this bag is exposed up here and that's just fine just keep cranking and let the juice flow a family affair here here's what it looks like right there's what it looks like and this is what it tastes like. I don't taste any of those rotten spots at all. It's pretty good. Mrs. Stony Ridge, would you like to try some? Yeah, give her a go. Tell me what your initial thought is. Get ready. Okay. Sweet. It's good. What does it taste like? Tastes like apples. Tastes like apple juice. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Bon appetit. <laughs> so this is really sweet, which means the sugar content will make it work off a whole lot faster for making the cider. It's got a little tart, a little bitter to it. So we got some tart apples and we got some sweet apples. You want to have that mixture in your cider. Now, each one of these bins costs $75 and they are 17 bushels a piece. 17 bushels of apples will give you around about 20 to 25 gallons of juice. Now that juice will work off and you'll have 20 to 25 gallons of apple cider or vinegar. We have two of these to do and we have seven carboys to fill up awesome we're gonna get busy so here's our bucket of juice and we're pouring it through a little filter here and we'll pre-filter this a couple times and what we're trying to do here is remove all the sediment that we possibly can before we get it in the carboys and i'll show you what comes out of here and it's just apple pieces basically the more that you can get out the clearer your vinegar is going to be and the clearer your cider is going to be so the next step is we're going to back off our pressure. We're going to take our bag back out and we'll dump it. We've got a big barrel right here, one of those big Rubbermaid barrels. And basically we'll just put all our scraps in there. We'll take some to the goats, some to the compost heap, and some to the deer. So the deer will keep coming up and eating these. It's good to put that back to your soil. Good stuff. Out comes the scraps into the barrel. Don't worry about that barrel. Just had garbage in it and garbage will help it ferment. All the stuff is designed to go together. Maybe in the future we'll build a stand where we can do this with a couple of these presses because it's really time consuming. Labor intensive, but we all need to get off the couch a little bit more anyway, don't we? We're gonna mash up probably at least a five gallon bucket today and we'll get out and do the rest tomorrow and the next day. And we'll go ahead and show you pouring it in the carboy so you can see the color 
And then over time here, we'll revisit our cider and our vinegar and show you working. So probably by the end of this video, stay tuned after the credits, we'll show you the carboy working inside the house. In other words, fermenting. Everybody gets a turn at the wheel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta work for it. We've got our five gallon glass carboy right here. We've got a little funnel here. And we're gonna use our small bucket and we're basically just gonna fill this up. Very, very simple here. I'm not gonna lie, if I had to do this again, I'd get a bigger funnel. We're gonna fill our carboy up here about to where the jar starts to turn in. Maybe a little bit shy of that because as this works, it's gonna foam up and it could overflow. And you sure don't wanna come into your kitchen or wherever you're doing this. You could do it in your kitchen, in your basement, in your garage. You just want the temperature to be between 60 and 70 degrees. The warmer it is, the faster it's gonna work, but we don't want it to overflow in our kitchen and make a mess. So we're gonna fill it up to about right here. We can put an airlock on here and this airlock will trap the alcohol in the bottle or we can put what we use is just pantyhose so you just strap pantyhose over here put a rubber band around it that keeps the gnats from getting in there it also lets it off gas in other words with this airlock basically you fill this with water it'll start bubbling and when it bubbles it's off gassing so the natural yeast will be producing alcohol as a byproduct and carbon dioxide the carbon dioxide will off gas now the alcohol will not off gas. So if you put pantyhose over it, the carbon dioxide will off gas and the alcohol will off gas. And that is where you get your apple cider vinegar. So what we wanna do is probably make one or two carboys of apple cider and the apple cider will be there probably after two or three weeks. Then you let it ferment just a little while longer and you'll have an apple wine. You could take that apple wine, run it through a distiller and you'll have apple brandy. Pretty cool stuff. Mainly our goal here is to achieve apple cider vinegar because we want it for our health and we want it to give to family members and friends. Thanks a lot for coming to the Stony Ridge Farm today, guys. We're doing something a little bit different, something fun, something with the family. Be sure you pound that like button, subscribe to the channel, click the little bell icon down there to notify you when I post a new video. We'll have links to all this stuff down in the video description. If you want to try this on your own, if you want to do it in your own home, if you're bored this winter and you just want to have some fun. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time. Land Woo! of the free and the home of the brave. I'm proud of who I am and I'm proud of what I made on a stony reef. Woo! <laughs> All right, so it's early morning and I've still got sleep in my eyes and we're here and this is the result, okay? So this will be working for about three weeks, four weeks, something like that, and some of it will even be up here longer. So we did a little something different with each jar. I'm gonna walk you through and tell you exactly what we did. I did this for experimental purposes to see what works best for sparkling cider, for apple brandy, for apple wine, for apple cider vinegar. So number one right here, we put eight cups of sugar and two packets of EC1118, and that is a wine yeast. This one, we left naked. I call it naked because we didn't do anything to it. We're just leaving it alone. This one's bubbling good. This one's not doing anything. This was jarred the same day as this. And we put an enzyme called pectic enzyme. And that enzyme is supposed to help clear up the cider. We also put saf cider cider yeast in this one, okay? This one over here, all we put was the peptic enzyme. And this final one right over here, we put one SAF cider and one EC1118 of yeast. So we're just kind of experimenting. We've got one more carboy sitting over here. Not quite sure what I'm going to do with that. We'll see where it goes. I may just leave it uncovered and put one more EC1118 in there and that will be vinegar for sure. So we'll just see how it all works off. Let me show you this thing bubbling. So this is number one. I've got a thermometer on there and it's just bubbling away. Pretty cool. Number two, isn't doing much. A lot of sediment going to the bottom. Number three has sediment in the bottom, but all that stuff is clearing up and it's stirring. So you can see it's starting to bubble good. 
it's not bubbling as fast as the one I put the sugar in. This was done yesterday. It's not bubbling at all, but it just has the peptic enzyme. And you can see the bottom has a lot more sediment in it. It's coagulating that sediment. And this one is working its butt off. And you can see there's sediment down the bottom there. There's yeast in there working. You see the bubbles. And it's slowly the airlock starting to bubble right there. So, Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I didn't ramble on too much, but I thought I'd give you enough information for you to have some fun with this. If you want to do it at home, all the products that we use will be linked down in the video description. In the refrigerator, I've got a five-gallon bucket here, and we're going to boil off some of it and jar it, can it, so that we'll have apple juice for the rest of the year. Cool.